your your people are turning to social media almost before they turn anywhere. You're looking, uh, you know, I, when I hear about something, I almost always before I even Google it, I almost always go to Twitter and check Twitter and, and you know and see what's going on and see if duck, duck go it. Duck duck go. Have you heard of that one? No, what's that? It's like a privacy focused search engine. It's like pretty much the only privacy alternative to Google. It's like this idea that we say, oh, just Google it. Right. Like, why do we, I mean, our whole process has been to like purge proprietary surveillance tools from our company. And I've been trying to do it myself, like getting off Facebook, getting off Twitter, getting off Instagram. It's just like, they're so abusive to everybody. And mm. it's like, there's brilliant people who work there. I mean, Instagram is such a well-designed app. Are you kidding yeah. me? It's beautiful. But so what do you think is abusive about it particularly? There's let's, let's just, start with Twitter. They're all the same. They're all the same. Yeah. Do you think they're all the same because they're all gigantic businesses? Yeah, and they're all the same because none of them share their source code and they all spy on everybody and they don't show you what is happening behind the scenes. They don't show you what the code's doing. So, like in that in that note I wrote to you the other day, it's like it's I compare it to like food transparency. You know, 50 years ago, nobody thought about that. And then 20 years ago, everyone's like, I want to know what's in my food. Why? But why wouldn't you want to know what's in your apps? Yeah. I mean, it's super sketchy what they're doing. But how so? Like, what, what's super sketchy? We don't know. But we know that they're spying on everyone and tracking you everywhere you go. They're targeting things at you based on physical location, browser history. Even when you're not on those websites, some of they're following you around where you're going on the internet. Right. And so some people accept that for this free search engine with free email and things along those lines. They accept the fact that a certain percentage of what they're doing is not going to be private. Mm -hmm. Or at least... Their searches are not going to be private. Like, say if you search, like you're thinking about buying a Jeep, and you search Jeeps, you look at, you know, 2019 Jeep, and then all of a sudden all your Google ads are about Jeeps. Right. They're like, we know. We know you're thinking about a Jeep, Bill. And I don't think that that makes people want to spend more time on Google and Facebook. It freaks What do you think it does? Out. Do you think it freaks them out? I think that we're just numb to it, and so we accept it. Yeah, but I think it's more that. Yeah, and so... There's all different layers of like what we use with your browsers, your apps, your operating system, your food, your, you know, government, your energy, like all of this technology has code right. that's associated with it. So, and when you s open up your computer, when you sign into a browser, when you open up an app, you are empowering that app. That's how the apps of the world become huge monstrous corporations is because we all use them every day. Right. So if you switch from, you know, OS, Mac OS to like GNU Linux or like Debian or Ubuntu, if you use Brave or Firefox, if you, um, you know, DuckDuckGo is actually proprietary, which is annoying, but they are very privacy focused. And then there's apps, there's Minds, there's all sorts, there's other open source decentralized social networks out there that we can potentially federate with. There's really cool, new, interesting protocols like DAT and IPFS that are like more torrent style backend. So there's actually no servers in a giant warehouse like Facebook and Google. It's more, it's fully peer to peer. Hmm. And we're trying to balance it because it's not like decentralization equals good and centralization equals bad. But like, you know, in order to get a sweet app like Instagram style, you need servers to like process video. And so the tech is still sort of immature in the fully peer to peer, like, you know, Bitcoin style internet, but we're definitely getting there. And I just think it's important for people to use things that are transparent to them and respecting our freedom. Yeah, I think one of the problems with these giant companies is that once they become big, you kind of use them as a default, and it's very difficult to get people to communicate with you off of them. You know, it's it's hard to say, hey man, I'm I'm launching this new social media app. I would imagine you could speak to this. I'm launching this new social media app, and uh, I want you to join it. People are like, but I'm already on fucking Facebook. I'm already on Google. I'm already on Instagram. I don't want to do that, man. It's too much, too yeah. much extra. And we make it a million times harder for ourselves because we're not scooping into people's contacts 
and you know taking all their information but you're not we're not no okay so like when you give your address book to a app who does that Every, most apps. You, be, you gotta be an asshole. You know, no, but when you say, oh, I want to find my friends who are on this app and you share your contacts. But you're not supposed you, to do that. You're not supposed to do that, yeah. But most yeah. people do. And, and you, you know, your friends didn't give you permission to give Facebook their phone number. Do you do that? I probably used to, like uh, seven, eight years ago, or whatever, but I don't do it anymore. I always say the same thing when it pops up. Get the <laughs> fuck out of here. That's always what I say. Would you like to share your, your contacts? Get the fuck out of here. No, you can't have my contacts, you asshole. I know what you're doing. Yeah. Facebook is a weird one, man. It's so, it's such a sneaky one. You know, f- Facebook and, you know, like all this, uh, the, the, the congressional hearings and the inner workings of it all. And you, we, the, the fact that it profits off of outrage, so it wants people to argue, like the, the AI, the computer learning specifically wants people to have like contentious debates about things because that keeps their eyes focused on the website Mm -hmm. and if your eyes are focused on facebook you know then those facebook ads are very valuable it's really fascinating man i think the outrage is unavoidable on any network it's more you know are you gonna are you gonna take down they're taking down outrage some yeah sure so and it just seems so inconsistent and subjective